Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. In this week's video, we're gonna do a Vancouver real estate market update for the spring of 2024. We're gonna talk about how the Bank of Canada just held its key rate yet again, what that's gonna mean for real estate prices. We're also gonna talk about whether Canadians and Vancouverites especially are finally starting to feel the pinch of higher interest rates. Real quick, if this is your first time to the channel, my name is Hassan, I'm a real estate agent in the Vancouver area, and I make educational real estate content weekly to help you on your real estate journey. When I'm not shooting videos like this, I'm helping clients buy and sell real estate across Vancouver and the Fraser Valley. If that's something you need help with, you can book me for a free call in the Calendly link below, but regardless, subscribe to this channel so you don't miss a future video. So right before we get started, I just want to mention I was on the CBC Evening News earlier this week with Dan Burrett uh, discussing the BC NDP housing policies as well as the BC United Party housing platform. It's a three minute segment. I'm going to link to it here if you're interested in watching that. And if you have any questions after watching that or any comments for me, please do leave them below. So the Bank of Canada held its key rate at 5%. Uh, yet again, this is the most expected move. Everyone was expecting them to hold this rate. There was a small percentage of people that thought they may drop the rate uh, at this last announcement, but that is not the case. We've now had this rate held uh, since about July or August of last year. Uh, the key things that I took away from the Bank of Canada's press conference is, uh, number one, they are cautiously optimistic. They're feeling good that uh, we are at the right rate uh, and that inflation is heading in the direction we need it to. Now, there are some uh, there are some points of caution for the Bank of Canada as well, mainly what they call a global war. I don't like to refer to it as a war, but that could uh, bring some volatility to inflation here in Canada, specifically if oil prices were to rise. So I think from the Bank of Canada's perspective, and one of the things that they said was, you know, it's no longer a question of, you know, do we need to move rates upwards? It's more of a question in terms of how long do we need to hold the rate where it's at right now uh, for us to see that def desired effect uh, with inflation. So long story short, the markets were already expecting there was going to be a rate hold. Now, did this bring a, a flurry of people uh, into the market or any anything along those lines when it comes to Vancouver real estate? No, people, like I said, we're expecting this to happen. We've been in a known situation now since, again, July of August of last year. Um, the interesting thing that did come out recently, though, is, you know, just how much are Canadians, Vancouverites, people in Toronto uh, feeling the effects of these higher than normal interest rates? Anytime I say high interest rates, people come at me. I realize if you look back over 30 years, they are not high, but, you know, the, the effects are, are starting to be felt and we're starting to actually feel it on the mortgage delinquency side. Now, Canada has had a very low and, and does still have a very low mortgage delinquency rate below 1%, uh, but Equifax just released some data for Q4 of last year uh, and they found across Canada, mortgage delinquencies were up over 50% in Q4 of last year versus Q4 of 2022. And if they looked at Toronto, Toronto was up 135%, and if they looked at the Vancouver area, uh, upwards of 60%. I think it was 62% uh, increase in mortgage delinquencies year over year in Q4 of last year. So that's obviously not a great sign. It's a sign that these in higher interest rates, uh, inflation, cost of living, it is it is causing a strain on Canadians right across the country. Um, you know, the other thing is uh, credit card delinquencies up as well. And generally, that's the first uh, kind of sign. People will, will fall delinquent on the credit card before they will on the mortgage. Uh, so yes, it's being felt. There are mortgage renewals happening as well. Uh, which is causing people to kind of be at the decision point. Their rates are much higher now. Their monthly payments are going up, uh, trying to figure out what they what they need to do or what they have to do with property. So I think now from the Bank of Canada perspective, to sum up this portion of the video, I, there's going to be a lot of pressure on them to, to be reducing the rate. And it's not like they're going to succumb to any pressure from the federal government. But I think over the next few months, we're really going to uh, learn a lot about the Vancouver real estate market, which I'm going to touch on in a few seconds here. 
Um, we're going to learn a lot about the real estate market and the resiliency of Canadians of being able to handle uh, this elevated cost uh, in the market. So I want to flip over very quickly to February stats because there are a couple of things that are quite different that we can talk about this month we haven't been able to talk about for quite some time. Now Metro Vancouver, Fraser Valley, uh, sales quantity were up year over year and that was expected you've you've heard it from me you've heard it from other realtors i'm sure the market is busier there's more activity happening uh, the big thing that jumped out to me <clears throat> is our uh, inventory levels on both sides on the metro vancouver side the fraser valley side we are actually now above our 10-year average and if you followed my channel for any period of time uh, for the last two years we've been struggling to get that inventory close to that 10-year average and as we sit after last month we are now a few percentage points above the 10-year average so the inventory that people were talking to come to the market uh, it has come and, and i think actually more is likely to come as well. We have to keep in mind, especially downtown area, Vancouver area, uh, with the new short-term rental legislation that's coming into place as of May 1st, I think we're gonna see more listings as well, especially downtown in some of those buildings uh, that had allowed for short-term rentals, uh, Vancouver area close to downtown. I think we are gonna continue to see an uptick of listings, but here is one of the important things to note is that Month over month, when we look at January to February, Metro Vancouver, Fraser Valley, prices still inched upwards. So even though we had this influx of inventory in the market, there were buyers there to purchase that inventory and, and enough so that prices went up. Not a lot, but a little bit. You would expect that if we're gonna have this increased excess inventory, uh, that there'd be so much for buyers to choose from, they'd be able to negotiate harder and, and prices would generally come down. That wasn't the case. Uh, if we look at annual pricing, again, Metro Vancouver, Fraser Valley, all product types up uh, anywhere from about four or 5% to seven or 8% year over year. So the thing to consider for me at least is, you know, we're coming off a, a, a tough year in Vancouver real estate. We're coming off uh, some of the highest interest rates we've seen in decades. All of these things that would lead you to believe that prices should come down. And yet there was price growth across you know, every segment out there in that type of a year. So when I look forward into the future, what, what's bound to happen? Although I do still think we're gonna see more inventory come to the market, I think the buyers are there ready uh, and prepared to, to make purchases to keep the market balanced. I don't think there's gonna be a huge influx in price upwards, but I do think prices will continue to, to move upwards as well. If we look at it from a sales to active ratio perspective, condos, townhomes, they are in seller's markets right now. Uh, detached homes, depending on the property, they're either getting no action or they're getting 30, 40, 50 offers. I'm finding that the entry level detached, uh, anything that has development capability uh, that's priced well, they are getting a lot of offers on them. So. The next few months are going to be very telling because I expect we're going to see more, even more inventory hit the market and let's see what that means for pricing. Uh, another indicator when we think more longer term about real estate, I did a video last week talking about the BC home flipping tax. I will link to that video so you can watch it after this one. But I mentioned in that video how you know the home flipper, the person that's being targeted by this tax, they don't even exist in today's market. And so I've had an, another week to, to really think about it and, and marinate in this new tax that's coming as of April 1st. Uh, and just to maybe do a, a quick reiteration, so this is a tax for anyone that buys and sells real estate within a two year period. Uh, if you sell it within that first year, you're gonna get taxed 20% of the profit. And if you sell it in that second year, it'll be a sliding scale downwards until it hits 0% at the end of the second year with a whole number of exemptions, job relocation for work, uh, death, divorce, dis disability, uh, threat to personal safety. There's a whole host of these uh, exclusions. So, you know, I mentioned how in today's market, that flipper doesn't exist. It's targeting someone that buys a property, does nothing with the property, sells the property, and sells it for a profit. I just mentioned year-over-year -year prices between 4 and 8%, depending on the product. Uh, that is not enough for someone to just purchase a piece of real estate, sell it, and, and actually make a profit when you think about the closing costs and uh, real estate commissions, all the sort of fees to it. It doesn't work today. But when I think about the provincial government putting this tax together, you know, what it tells me is they are foreseeing real estate prices to increase as well. 
This is a future tax. This is them putting something in place, understanding that if we enter a market, which is expected where interest rates are going to come down, and generally when that happens, the correlation is real estate prices go up. They want to be prepared for when that happens, for when that year is, whether it's 2025, 2026, that when prices do again escalate 10%, 15% in a year, where a flipper is born. And I say a flipper is born because... Very few people buy a piece of real estate with the initial plan to sell it in the year because they expect it's going to go up. What had happened in the past in very hot markets is people would purchase a property fully intent on living in that property. A year later, they see it's up 17, 18%. Interest rates are ridiculously low. Prices go through the roof. And a year later, they look at it and they, they make a decision at that point saying, I have to capitalize on this. So I say a flipper is born in certain years and that year will come again. And I believe that home flipping tax is being set in advance of that so that they're prepared to collect some tax revenue for when that is. So all in all, as I summarize this video, if you're watching and you are a buyer and you're wondering, you know, is now the right time to get in the market? Should I be waiting? I think you're going to have a lot of opportunity. Uh, there's been some changes as well to first time home buyer uh, exemptions. If you watched last week's video, uh, you're going to see some more details on that for property transfer tax. So it makes it a little bit easier for first time home buyers. Uh, but for me personally, I I, I believe that this is a bit of a calm before the storm and not necessarily that this storm is coming at some point this year. I'm not suggesting that, but a storm will come to Vancouver real estate where prices do increase at a higher clip again. We've already had the Bank of Canada come out and say, look, it doesn't matter what we do with interest rates. We're not going to be able to control real estate prices. We have a supply problem. So knowing this, if you're in a financial position to make a sound purchase and and you're comfortable with where the payments will be uh, i i think with this added inventory uh, you'll have some opportunity and what i'm noticing with my clients as well especially on the first time buyer scale where we're buying you know between say six hundred thousand and a million dollars is for most of those properties condos especially uh, we're able to write offers with subjects and i think that's incredibly important when we get into a hotter market for first time buyers especially or people who are inexperienced uh, to write an offer and have to compete against offers that don't have any subjects in there, uh, in my experience, my clients have told me that is, that's the scary part for them. And so we've been fortunate. I've had viewers uh, from YouTube, actually, we've helped this year and been able to write subjects in our offers and do due diligence. So I still see that opportunity moving forward. If you're a seller, like I mentioned earlier, uh, you know, as long as you are priced correctly, uh, you're marketed well, uh, you're going to do well in this market. The buyers are there to purchase the properties, but marketing, I, ha I must say, is critically important. I had an agent call me uh, yesterday and he asked me, I had never spoken to him before. He said, you know, I've been watching your stuff. Can you give me advice on my listing? Why is it not selling? And he mentioned how a very comparable listing had sold a month before, uh, right around the same price, but his was not moving. And the reality is I took one look at the listing and I knew exactly why it wasn't selling. And it wasn't, you know, the listing hadn't had any professional photography done to it. The angles were funny. The lighting was funny. It didn't look inviting. Um, so make sure you hire uh, someone who is going to invest in your listing. If you're listing your property, You've invested so much in your home. Do not give that opportunity to sell that property to someone who's not going to invest in your home like you have. So if you choose the right agent, if you choose someone who's big on marketing, if you choose someone who has a large online presence, who's going to get your property in front of the most people, you're going to do very well in this market. So there you have it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this week's video. If you did, hit the like button because what that does is it takes the video and it sends it out to more people so they can learn from it as well. And if you enjoy this weekly real estate content, subscribe to this channel so you don't miss next week's video. And lastly, again, if you're in the Vancouver area or the Fraser Valley and you want my help with your real estate situation and goals, you can book me for a free call in the Calendly link below or just give me a call, send me a text, shoot me an email, whatever is easiest for you. I'd be happy to chat with you one on one. But I want to thank you again for watching this week's video and I look forward to seeing you next week.